Hello everyone, it's Rachel here and today I'm going to be doing my own take on a pocket design that I saw on Rita Jensen's channel. It is um, like a concertina fold type of one. So first of all what I need to do is measure the edges and we're going to have, um, we'll go with the measurements that Rita did but I'm sure it doesn't have to be this exact height so six inches we're doing here six inches on one side and then we're going to do four inches on the opposite side I'm just doing a little mark there so that we can see where we want to cut now I will be amazed if this fits in here between those two marks one right up there, where's the other mark gone? Oh, you know what, we might be in luck. So that's that one there, that one there, and then we're going to cut on the diagonal. And it's the larger piece that we're going to be working with. Now, we need to fold this piece into four sections equally and Instead of scarring that, I'm just going to fold it because this paper's thin and I think that it can cope. So, I'm just lining those straight edges up as best I can and then fold them down. So, one fold in the middle and then we fold back on ourselves. Like that. And back. like that okay so because this was a narrower sheet of paper than what Rita did these sections aren't as broad as they were um, on Rita's so I'm still happy with the way that looks because by the time I get some tags in there have I got any handy So then you're going to have one, two, three sections and then a back one if you stick it down with three edges. So then I wanted to do the same again on the other piece. So we'll work upside down this time. And do it on. What I think I will do, oh, let's just go for it and see what happens because I can't figure out in my mind how to make those flower designs match up because it's got the same paper on the back but a different paper on the reverse. So four inches on that side and then we cut. that up there, that down there, and cut that diagonally. You could do a miniature version with this piece couldn't you? So then if I fold that the same way and hopefully when we flip it over we'll be able to match up the flower side well I'm amazed that that worked so that's what I was trying to do I was trying to get those two papers matched up but now that I've done that I can see that they are in fact different colour ways so never mind we can do these as separate pockets or we could fold it Actually, I'll just try and see what happens if we slot them into one another. So that would work, but I think it's just a bit overkill, isn't it? Far too many pockets, far too much bulk. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven slots that will give you, give you, but I don't want to do that just now. So I'm going to make these into two separate pockets. So what I want to do next is um, ink everything up and then I'm going to glue the pockets into place. With this one I'm going to fold it in the opposite direction because I want to use that pattern paper. These two pockets are likely to be going in the same journal so I want to give a bit more variation with the look of it. So now that's a bit different looking to the other. So when I'm gluing, and I'm going to be gluing the smallest section just to make sure that nothing reaches up higher than that page. You see, if I, if I did the larger section, then I've got the potential to go over the lines here. So if I do the smaller one, that'll avoid that problem. Let's just see if this is clogged up, because I know I left the, the pin out. It's not happy with me now. There we go. Bottom and the short side, or the open side, that needs to be stuck down. And then repeat for the next concertina. And then repeat for that last flap. And then I'm just going to weigh that down under my broken tape dispenser. I'm going to repeat that for this one. I have a theory that any kind of diagonal cut will work. So I am just going to try it with this piece of tracing paper. And just do any kind of diagonal. Yep, so this is really thick tracing paper and it's worked really well and I do like it when there's a bit more depth to those triangle shapes so maybe a steeper um, cut works, like makes it a bit more aesthetic. So I'm just going to glue that with a small amount of art glitter and then I'll stitch around the edges for this one to try and hide some of that glue work. Okay, so I'm going to decorate these ones up now. Hope that's close enough for you to see what I'm doing. Um, I thought I would add some ribbon to this one. But I think this might be a bit too um, bulky. Try and cut that tape off without ruining the, the design of the lace. And I 
don't think that's going to lie flat enough for what I want. I found this pink ribbon. And then these little flowers. There, I like that. So I'm going to put that down and stick it into position. The thing with this broadery stuff is trying to figure out which way it's supposed to go. I'm going to call that the back. I'm just kind of guessing where that's going to be laid. And then I'm going to stick that one on the back as well. I can afford to be a bit more uh, liberal with the glue. Because that won't be seen, it's going to be stuck down. Just give the heart a bit of shading around the edges, extra dimension. And then my little flower and leaf on top. So that looks quite nice. That can be drying over there while I do the other one. So I found this little cluster and I thought I might do that because it's ready to go and the colours are pretty spot on. So I'm just going to stick that straight down without much fuss. I think I made this in another video. It was one of the smaller ones that I did. And then I've got a couple of sticky words from a Tim Holtz um, pad. I'll try and link those below if I remember to find the link for you. I'm going to pop beautiful dreams on there and I'm just taking away the stark whiteness of the edges. And then what I think I will do with this one is leave it loose so that will go inside a pocket and then it can be pulled out to put tags and bits and bobs in. I have that little paper clip that's too loose it needs, well it could be manipulated possibly. Yeah, that works. I don't know if I need it yet. So I've got a tag to go in the back. It's perfect for tags, this, this design. Too big, that one. I've got this one here. I'm just going to use some cotton in coordinating colours. Thread, rather, not cotton. I think it's acrylic. Just 
make a little pull for that. And then when you use smaller tags like this, you're able to just make them come out at a slight angle so that it looks a bit more appealing to the eye. What else? A white journal card. I sell these ones in the shop if you want something a bit different. Something with an alternative shape to the usual. And then do I need a bit of ruffle along the bottom? I think what I might do is just see if I can press this stuff because... Oh no, it's not too bad. I've got a raggy end there. I'll cut that off. I'm just going to cut a piece to make it easier to work with because it's quite bouncy. But if I just use my fingers to press that open, and then I think just adding that little bit down the bottom is quite pretty. Shall I do it up there as a stopper? Because all I'm thinking is when you put it in a pocket, that's going to catch, isn't it? Whereas if you put it there, then it won't slip too far down into the pocket. Yes, I'll do that. I've never used this for attaching fabrics before, so we'll see what it's like. So don't take that as a recommendation. Just take it as an experiment. And then instead of wrapping this one around, it's just going to be cut flush with the edge. So that the back still looks nice and neat and plain. And you could add some sort of image onto the back as well if you wanted, or another cluster. There, love it. So that's our two. Pop a journal card. That one small enough for the back pocket. I'll just add a should I add some of that pink as a string? Just trying to get it equal. It's quite bouncy this one. It's trying to stay out of shape, it doesn't like the shape I'm trying to put it in. There we go, and that can go in that pocket. And that pink just adds a little flash of deeper colour. And then, have we got anything else nearby? No, I haven't. I would have to go dig in, but I won't subject you to that just now. So that's those two. I'm just going to run upstairs and sew this. So I'm not going to do any major decorating on this one. I'm just going to stitch one, two, three edges, um, maybe with a zigzag or something like that. And then that will just cover up the glue marks and add a nice crunchy packet to go inside a journal. So here we have the finished tracing paper pocket. I don't love it but I don't hate it. Um, I did a fancy stitch and I think maybe that's taken it a bit too overboard. Um, also, I'm not, actually it will, it will, sorry, Rachel, get your words out. I was worrying that this was gonna rip when you put things in, but actually this is 90 GSM tracing paper and it doesn't feel like it's going to tear um, when you slip something flat inside, but I would, only stick something like a, a plain ticket inside or a plain uh, tag. But I do like the fact that this would add a change of texture to the journal and give that crunchy effect. So there you have today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll give it a try. Thank you again to Rita for her video and to everybody who came before her with it. <laughs> and um, 
yeah I'll go and watch the end of a video now because I, <laughs> I got so excited a third of the way in that I decided to that I just had to come and film and try it and do it for myself so I'll go and see what she actually did with hers now <laughs> okay thank you bye